Hey, Roadrunners. Yeah, it's Thursday night. Our Roadrunners go up to Murphy somewhere, Tennessee, to play the MTSU Blue Raiders. Interesting nickname, Blue Raiders. I guess there's some kind of historical connotation about it. But anyway, it's the four-letter acronym Bowl. UTSA up at MTSU. What can we expect? Well, if you've been keeping up with college football, you know Middle Tennessee State is 3-1. and one. Their only loss is to James Madison, a recent convert from the FCS level. National champion at the FCS level, perennial, been a perennial uh, top eight, top four finisher in FCS level. So they're no slouch. They got beat pretty good. But their last game, Middle Tennessee took it to Miami. Miami was never in that game, right? I mean, not really. It, you don't beat a team 45 to 31 or whatever that score ended up being. Let me see. Let me let me see if I can't figure out what that score was. It was pretty good. 45-31. Hey, off the top of my head. And, and not be legit. Now, the question is going to be, has Middle Tennessee State played an offense that we, we offer, right? We have three wide receivers that have, averaged 100 yards per game. Frank Harris is thrown for 1,300 yards. He's rushed for another almost 200 on top of that, something like 169. Brendan Brady hasn't gotten a lot of yards, to over 200 yards. He's out of himself. He's, he's, he has definitely earned his yardage. There, there's no doubt about that. So we got to worry about two things. How do our roadrunners respond to going on the road after – Facing a, a plucky upstart Texas Southern that, that brought it. And how does our offensive line handle having another team coming after them? You know, Middle Tennessee State would like nothing better than to ruin our chances at, at, a, at a second conference championship. We're the conference champs. Every Conference USA team is going to bring it to us. Rotating our defense, specifically our front seven, is fast as much as we did against Texas Southern. Will that lead to... Dadrian Taylor getting back on the field. You know what I'm saying? Are you developing the second and third stringers? Did that help to get them ready so we can keep that rotation going as the season goes on? And does that help us against Middle Tennessee State? Our secondary transfer uh, uh, rotated pretty good also. Uh, but like I said, uh, Baker, uh, Baker Mayfield, Corey Mayfield, <laughs> different players. I don't know why Corey Mayfield was out there most of the game. On defense, defensive captain, right? So, so you kind of expect to see that. Uh, so, we'll see how the how the how the team responds. I am cautiously optimistic. Uh, Middle Tennessee has the win probability percentage in their favor, like sixty something percent, right? So that's going to be them being home, them coming off a high. Do they stay high, right? Is this their confidence builder? Because they've beaten Colorado State, mm, okay, but then they beat Tennessee Tech or Tennessee State, somebody like that. So would you say them beating Miami is better and losing to James Madison is better than our out-of-conference schedule and our record? That's going to be interesting to 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 – to think about. That's a big interesting discussion we have throughout the game with ourselves and amongst buddies that we watch the game with and how we re repair, prepare or repair after the game, right? For my video after the game. Here, here's all I know is when our offensive coordinator sent basically all three receivers on a, on fly patterns, one with a deep out, deep in, Texas Southern couldn't cover anybody. There was nobody there to cover. Frank could throw it to anybody. Now, what's really interesting, and let's talk about the receivers having 100 yards each average a game, is what's interesting about it is think of how many drops we had in the U of H game. There were a lot of drops that would have really would have won the game for us, would have salted the game away for us. It happens, right? But what I'm interested in seeing is Frank is really distributing that football. If all three of them are averaging 100 yards, Frank's thrown for 1,300 yards in four games. I mean, he's hit the tight end a couple times, 
So you throw the ball, but if you look, Frank Harris doesn't put up like monster passing yards, right? He puts up good passing yards, don't get me wrong, but it's not like he's putting up 500 a game, right? To where you get this average and we're running the ball uh, when we get up big, right? He's having to earn these yards. So I'm wondering how good his vision is, because his vision's pretty good. His vision's pretty good, but I'm wondering if the coaching staff has now realized people are really keen on Zakari. So it's third and four. Zakari's usually the guy that Frank goes to. You've heard Coach Trailer talk about it. So he moves Zakari to the left. All of a sudden, there's Cephas. They don't know who they got to cover. Do they switch coverage coverages? Or is Zakari all of a sudden covered by the number three defensive back? Or do they rotate over, and now you've got a linebacker trying to cover Cephas or Clark? It, it, it's, it's an interesting uh, thing to look at. That requires a lot of uh, game film that I really don't have time for. You know, I watch the game. It's going to be easier to watch because I'll be at home. I won't be in Tennessee than it is when I'm in the stadium. And when I'm in the stadium, I go a lot more by feel, right? And when I can watch it on TV, I can see the replays. I can see what was happening, right? It, it's, it's a little easier. It's like game film when you're watching it. So tell me what you think. Tell me what you look forward to see. I want to see how do we respond to our first Conference USA road test. Mind you, this is coming from a guy who said, I'd be okay with seven and five. I'd be okay with leaving out of conference one and three. Well, we're now two and two. So I'm in the I'm in plus territory. So now we got eight games to play. So that means we can win five games and still be seven and five in conference. We win six games, be eight and four. We've really excelled, in my opinion. Could it be better? Of course it could be better. And uh, we, we all know, but we can't harp on it, but we can talk about what led to those losses, right? The, the loss specifically against Houston. Now, let's talk about Middle Tennessee State. They didn't have a player last year. and We beat them pretty good, right? We beat them 20, in 2021 pretty good. Uh, or was it 2020? But anyway, they didn't have a, they, they lost a, a very important player for them. And he's back now. So that's making them a little bit more electric. Our, our defenders, they're going to have to really be on their A game. They, they, they really are, I think. I think we're going to see a test, a big, the biggest test of our depth so far. First, first, first game, everybody was healthy, right? On the, on the defensive side of the ball. Now we're banged up a little bit. Rashad didn't play the second half of the game. I, I, someone said they saw him walking in street clothes. We out, wasn't out on the field. Maybe that was just, hey, we're, we're not putting you out there. We think we can cover these guys. Uh, Dadrian Taylor wasn't out there, right? But he was seen pretty, oh, on the sideline, he seemed pretty good. So maybe it was just the coaching staff said, look, this game doesn't matter. And really, in our, in our, in our era right now, in our period, in our, in our era, our period, in, in, in our program, in our history, what matters are conference wins and conference championships. We can lose to Texas State. It doesn't mean anything. We can win out and we, I doubt you, we would be, we could win out and we wouldn't finish the season ranked. I, I, I just feel that way. So, so all that matters is win enough games, get to the conference championship and hoisting the trophy again. That's what matters, right? So if we can win with, Dadrian Taylor, you know, taking it easy. He wasn't taking it easy. Trust me. He was pumping the team up. He, he was active. And it was good to see. If we can win with uh, Rashad just, you know, undressing or de-dressing or taking his jersey off in the second half, then, then that's good. Getting him ready for conference play. That's the important part. Now, what I would love to see, what I would love to see is Brendan Brady, a little bit more focus on getting him the football. Uh, maybe we can, I don't want to say shorten the game, but sh shrink the game, get the game even smaller by getting him involved. Cause we could do that with, with, uh, with, with sincere last year, right? We could do that when he, we could get him into it. We, sh we shrank that field for their defenders. Next thing you know, our guys were just running completely wide open, right? And it wasn't as hard to get wide open. 
I'd love to see us get to there. Hopefully, Traylon Smith is back and gives us some, some lightning in a bottle because he is faster than Brittany, smaller, a little bit jukier, right? So if he can get back out there, I don't know. I didn't look at the depth chart. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm excited about it. It's cautious optimi optimism. If we go in there and we get that victory, then I'll feel really good about the rest of the rest of the season. I'll feel really good about our chances against Western Kentucky. I'll feel really good about, about, about our chances against UAB. I'm, I feel good about them anyway, but I'll feel a little bit better. Barring injuries, right? Barring injuries. I think this is a good, well, it is. It's a conference opener tester. Where do we stand? And... Let's bring it. Let's bring it. Bring your energy if you're watching it. Hopefully, you can make the game. Hopefully, we get some shots of, of mini roadrunners in, in the stands. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But I can tell you that our boys will be prepared. That They will. I think that that game last year up in Denton where the team just looked flat, came off that emotional high of, you know, beating UAB – winning the West, right? Kind of played into the favor of not the team not really preparing themselves, properly taking care of themselves. I think this team is probably at that point to where you have a little bit more, no, we've really got to prepare a little bit more. We've really got to take the smaller things and amplify them even bigger because we're, maybe we're not as good. You know, we don't have Lorenzo Dantzler. We don't have Jalen Haynes. But we do have McDougal. Right? And he's playing admirably. He's playing great. So, but we can't lose him. Right? So let's see how we go. I would, the second thing I'd love to see is a lot more use of our tight ends in the, in the passing game. Get Sharp, Dishman, Cardenas. Get, get them some passes, man. Seriously. I would love to see. I would love it if there's one game where they play our wide receivers so tight that our, that our tight ends just take over. And just we just get them with those 15-yard darts and seven-yard runs after as guys are trying to tackle them. Because they're all three of those, they're big boys. Our tight ends are some big boys. It'd be nice to see them get some hit licks on some unexpected DBs, right? Because they're too focused on our three great great wide receivers. So I don't think Middle Tennessee State's seen our offense, and I don't think they've seen the level across the board for wide receivers. I think that's playing in our favor. Uh, I don't. I'm not gonna. I don't make. I don't. I don't make predictions too much. But I think. I think we got a good shot at ten points. I really do. Uh, this may come back to bite me. Hey, you can laugh at me. Remember what I said? I said you can laugh at me for my my prediction against Texas. Don't care. I wear I wear the navy. I wear rowdy on my on my hat. I go to work. I'm wearing my UTSA polo. So I'm repping. That's okay. I'm repping respectively. I mean respectably, respectively, or both. I'm rep. I'm doing both. So tell me what you think because. I'm excited. I really am. But it's a Friday night game. And what do you think the odds are? 50-50? 70-30? On us running another trick play. <laughs> I mean, teens just fall for it. it, it and it, what cracks me up is that I always see this, and I think of whenever we do it, Les Miles, when he coached LSU, I don't know how many teams fell for it, but they ran trick. They ran fake punts. They ran fake field goals. And every time, I swear, I don't remember them never converting. Right? I don't remember them ever getting stopped on running fake field goals or fake punts. It's amazing to me at how even I, just watching it going, Play it safe. Don't try to get after the kicker. Don't, don't, right? And and don't run back for 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 a return. Just play punt safe, play kick safe. And you know what? They'd still come after and that kid, the holder, throw it over his head. The kicker's gone, right? I think he even scored touchdowns doing that. 
And how many times did the their, their kicker realize, oh, hey, they're not coming after me. They've turned around. I, I can outrun this one guy and go for like 18 yards for a first down. I mean, it's just crazy. We do it a lot. And it, well, it's fun to see, actually, because that's a setup. It's not a trick play. You're setting teams up. You're setting them up, setting them up, setting them up. And then you're doing something totally different because you start getting them coach doing that. It's a play action pass. Is that a trick play? Right? You see what I'm saying? So it's not really a trick play. So let's see how many throwbacks we get. Let's see if we get a double reverse. Who knows? We've tried that. So let's see it. Hey, Roadrunners, you enjoy it. I'm going to make another video later on tonight uh, of grading the kickers because I don't think I graded the kickers. And I think they need a grade. And that may change my grade for uh, the Roadrunners as a team and, as, and, and for the season. So I need, I need to get that prepared. I'm going to do a uh, maybe go a little bit more in depth because I've kind of mentioned it today for the wide receivers and how they're just so dynamic, all of them averaging 100 yards. Anyway, see you guys. Hopefully, I make it to the alumni watch party. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence. You know, I just got into Houston from Frisco, Texas, so I may, I may just stay at the house because, I, I mean, I've been working all week, right? Anyway, peace out. Birds up.